Did you live here all alone? Who undressed me? Who lent us clothes wet? Well, I undressed. Gang, Todd and Sunny here. And uh, last week we looked at a really crappy sci-fi film from Italy, and it got me to thinking. You know, over here in America, we were making crappy sci-fi films way before they were in Europe. In fact, our films were even crappier. So I'm highlighting one of those. Uh, this film. Uh, women of the prehistoric planet is also very important because it gave us Misties one of our favorite catchphrases. Jim Carter. No, no, not that one. The the other one. I keep it. That's the one. Oh, though my personal favorite of uh, all the riffs they've done is from This Island Earth. Uh, I'm not an alien. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is from the uh, mid-60s, and it had some uh, interesting combination of actors who had had their heyday the decade before, and actors who would have their heyday the next decade. Uh, previous decade actors was, of course, John Agar, who we... Uh, I'm not sure if I touched on him in an earlier film, but... Uh, Quick synopsis, he was a World War II veteran who, when he got out of the army, uh, fell in love and married Shirley Temple and uh, got signed to a studio and made films with John Wayne. Then, due to a tumultuous divorce, we won't go into that, he uh, then became a star of low-budget sci-fi horror films like Tarantula and The Mole People. And in the 60s, he had uh, gone down to supporting roles in uh, films like this one we're looking at and Journey to the uh, uh, Hand of Doom. We'll go with that one. Anyway, uh, the other actor who had seen Better Days was Wendell Corey, who... Uh, we had touched on back in uh, Astro Zombies. As for the two up-and-comers, well, first we had Robert Ito, who, in the 70s and 80s, would be a very big, well, he would be a very popular TV star uh, with Jack Klugman on the uh, interesting concept of a couple of... Uh, medical coroners who solved murder mysteries in Quincy, and Stuart Margolin, who uh, probably my favorite performance of his is in Death Wish as the man that ends up giving Charles Bronson the pistol he uses. Uh, but he, also in the 70s to 80s, would become uh, in another crime show well, on the same network as Quincy, ironically. He would be James Garner's former cellmate and perpetual thorn in his side con man Angel on the Rockford Files. Not too shabby. Well, we uh, start out our uh, film here in the reaches of outer space. Uh, we're on a uh, spaceship. Number one. Is it number one or it's, some, it's a Cosmos One. Cosmos One. Led by Wendell Corey as an admiral 
and uh, they are on a long trip, and this is probably one of the first films that actually used correctly the concept of time uh, disbursement in that they were traveling at close to light speed, meaning their time went slower than time on other worlds, which we'll play into the plot later. And uh, they are uh, receiving, or should say not receiving, uh, messages from Cosmos 3, which has a full full cargo of important uh, platinum metal as well as citizens uh, let's see uh, of a planet I think it's celestials let me check what would you do there are 20 people and a valuable cargo of gravitite aboard that ship there is responsibility correction doc there are 12 men in a cargo aboard the cosmos 3 the rest are centaurians Centaurans. Okay. Mm. And also got the metal wrong. But hey! I'm old. What do you expect? And what do these Centaurans look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's one right now. After all, they're hardly more than barbarians. The Centaurians once had a very high culture, Scott. So they're... Asian. Yeah, we're going to be getting into some really cringy racist, racial stuff here, aren't we? Yeah. Anyways, the reason the ship is not being able to be communicated with and has gone way off course, there's been a bit of a mini-rebellion. Seems some of the um, Centaurians, they want to return to their home instead of being on this ship going wherever it's going and so there's been a bit of a mutiny which has uh, ended up with uh, well an action scene hi keeper <laughs> which of course leads us to one of the best of the uh SF effects that uh, this film will have. Jim Carter. Not too shabby. Of course. Is it just me, or does that look kind of like the flying sub from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea? It does a little, doesn't it? Well, I wonder how many survived. Don't touch me. I told you to stay away from me. I only want to help you, Lieutenant. You need help. If it weren't for you and your kind, none of us would need any help. I'm sorry for what has happened, but I didn't rebel. Jane was your brother. What's the difference? So, four. But two are injured. And the other two, a husband and wife, uh, one centurion and one not. But this is going to put a strain on their marriage, you know, the whole rebellion thing. wonder how they'll resolve it. That'd do it. Killing your brother to save your husband. Well, meanwhile, back on Cosmo 1, the Admiral's been ordered not to go search for survivors. And he immediately ignores that order. Now, it's only going to take them maybe a few days, a week at most, to get back there. But on the planet, That'll be about 18 years. Well, they land, and uh, Commander Scott, our uh, so eloquent uh, second-in-command, who uh, 
does not like Centaurians. He uh, commands the away team, which includes the engineer, the doctor, and uh, some others. And uh, it's a jungle planet. And it doesn't take him long to see some of the natural uh, life there. Anybody move? It's a giant iguana! Ooh. And where do they get off swiping the creature from the Black Lagoon music? I wonder how tough this animal will be to take out. Wow, how exciting. I think they just killed a real iguana for this film. Anyway, uh, the tutorial we met earlier, Linda, has been cooped up on a ship a long time and so she slips away after they landed. And uh, the Admiral, since she's in his charge, sends out a couple of crewmen to uh, get her and bring her back. She's found a nice little pond where she strips down and takes a swim. And then after she gets dressed, she meets another of the uh, natural wildlife of this planet. Well, the two crewmen have heard the scream and they run to rescue her, but they don't find her. They do find her shoes. And the other telltale sign of somebody having been there. Her boat! Yeah, that's hers, all right. Look at the size of that thing. Must be 20 feet long. Come on, let's get back to the ship. Let's go. Come on. You're, you're not going to try and track her footprints or anything? No? And that was not a 20 foot long snake. That was no anaconda. We got eyes? Well, after some more footage of the other away team tramping through uh, foliage and stopping to rest and have humorous conversations, uh, we find out who it was that saved Linda. Girl. Are you? I am Tang. Tang is a Centaurian name. I am Centaurian. How can that be? A Centaurian on an uninhabited, undiscovered planet? Some of the crew, some of the people on that ship were Centaurian. Hmm. Oh, maybe if he introduces her to his family. It is Zenda. She's beautiful. Mother. Father. That is Lieutenant Anderson. He's not a Centaurian. My father. Well, that wraps all that up. How'd they get in the ice? Reminiscent of uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, though. Or no. House of Frankenstein. It's hard to keep them all straight. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, once back in the uh, sleeping area, it suddenly dawns on Linda. He's the only one there. Who undressed her? Well, he did. Her clothes were wet. So they get into a little slap fight that ends with them kissing and falling onto the uh, animal furs into a fade out. Mm hmm. Sex. 
Well, meanwhile, the away teams run into a bit of a snag. Amulet Road. You know, you could have just gone around that other way. I mean, you can clearly see that it's it's land right there. Well, they get a a, a rope across so that the, everybody else can cross with the rope for you know. And well, it's time we had some red shirt action, I think. Wow. Didn't mean literally, but okay. After a few seconds of mourning, they head out, where they finally find the crashed ship. And as they explore it, they, uh, they find a recording. Maybe this will tell them what happened. And now there are only three of us. I don't expect Sergeant Long to last more than a few days now. His head injury has caused loss of sight in both eyes, and his brain seems to have been damaged somehow. I'm also certain that my fever will soon overcome me. There are no more drugs aboard the ship. So, that's what happened to everyone. None of them have an immune system attuned to this planet. But of course, Tang, having been born there, developed immunity. Of course, they don't know about that yet. And unfortunately, we lose our most interesting character, uh, the engineer. Quick, get back! <laughs> Yikes! I don't even like ordinary looking spiders that are only that big. Wonder who's going to jump on next. You can spring that far. Look out, he's going to jump! Well, the chief's dead. He had all the best funny lines, unlike uh, the other guy who thought he was a comedian. So they take the recorder and head back to their ship. And uh, at this point, the Admiral, he's wanting to lead the, uh, the away team himself tomorrow. He's got to find Linda. His attachment to her is kind of almost of a controlling aspect. I mean, he's really, really got to find her. I wonder why. Hmm. Anyway, uh, the next morning, uh, Scott uh, and two others, they head out before the Admiral gets up. They know the Admiral. He's too close to this to be able to um, be a uh, objective observer. He's just he's too focused. So they head out for those caves that were mentioned in the uh, the recording. Meanwhile, Linda and Tang wake up and they have a bit of a Tarzan kind of. Uh, scenario where he shows her all the fruit he's collected and they eat and then a chimpanzee comes and there's some funny jokes about uh, how to eat a banana she doesn't understand you have to peel it and then the chimp shows her how to peel it you know just like in Tarzan <clears throat> then they have another fight of her wanting to go back to the ship take the food and he thinks she's leaving him and then they frolic in the uh, water and uh, she convinces him to go and introduce himself to the rest of the people in the ship. Sex. So they go to the ship when, what do you know, these Neanderthals he had warned her about actually show up. Wow, he is 
just like Tarzan. He's whipping the crap out of all these Neanderthals. Well, of course, our way team, hearing all this commotion, comes upon the scene, grab Linda, and make the complete erroneous conclusion of who Tang is. <laughs> Going into hysterics, they uh, have to sedate her and drag her back to the ship, where, once awake, she explains how pissed off she is at them for shooting her boyfriend. Well, the Admiral sends out another search party uh, with another uh, Centaurian to uh, translate if necessary, but no matter how much they search and call, he ain't showing up, because they shot him! <clears throat> Anyway, uh, they're just going to have to, to leave because the volcano's going to erupt and they're kind of in the path. So Linda, of course, sneaks out again. So this time the Admiral and Scott, you know, the bigot, they go after her, but they can't get far. There's the earthquakes and, and the, the, the volcano's going to erupt and then we finally learned the answer we already figured out like a half hour ago. Get back to the ship! That's an order! We're both going back! Oh, I can't leave her here! I can't! Look, leave me here! I have to find her! Don't you understand? She's my responsibility! And all I have, Linda's my daughter! Scott doesn't like that rank being pulled on him. Yeah, we already figured out who Linda and the Admiral were kind of obvious but anyways Scott cold cocks the Admiral and drags him back to the ship as for Linda well she's returned to their little oasis just warm your heart and since the volcano is erupting and all that stuff they climb to higher ground to get away from it which is a good thing and by vertical gravitators yes the vertical control and by vertical gravity hold it scott they're alive admiral lind and the boy look attention attention linda is alive linda and the boy are alive okay well that's a what off their mind? I guess they're gonna go down and pick them up. Oh, Mr. Scott, let's get about going home. You mean we're not going back to the Admiral? No, we'll not go back. They'll be happy here. They belong here. They belong to each other. It's rather progressive of him. Anyway, uh, some of the other uh, romantic entanglements that have been spread throughout this film uh, finally get paired off uh, Scott ends up with one of the uh, other crew members who's been pining for him and the jokester ends up with someone he's been chasing after and then we get our final twist from this day forward third planet of Solaris will be known as the blue planet we designated planet Earth I'm shocked, shocked. Yeah, shocked. It's Earth again. Say, does this mean Tang and Linda are Adam and Eve? Well, that throw your theology off. And how do we get the term Earth now if it was named on that ship? As if this film makes any logical sense to begin with. Actually, I chopped a lot of it, the plot, out because it's just meandering stuff on the ship. You know, uh, this person likes that person. This person ignores that person. This person doesn't like these people from this planet, and they get chastised for it. And bad attempts at comedy, and ugh. the only saving grace to me is Stuart Margolin because he at least knows 
how to say a line and have it be amusing. Did you hear what I heard, Mr. Bradley? We're reducing speed. I heard. And I hope that doesn't mean we've been on the wrong course all this time. No, not with Scott navigating. He knows what. It's sad, Lieutenant, but I got a feeling the old man's got a bad case of cosmic fever. <laughs> well, where's your spirit of adventure, Chief? I thought you loved this life. Spirit I've got, adventure I've had, love I was looking forward to. Say, Chief, you and Mr. Bradley are engineers. Why don't you build a better bridge? <laughs> Wrong kind of engineer. Compare that to the official comedy relief of Paul Gilbert. How did you ever qualify for this duty, Bradley? Well, my commanding officer asked for volunteers for an important expedition. I thought he meant exhibition. And that's one of his better jokes. Anyway. The, uh... Action's okay. It, it's kind of a boring film. There's just lots of dialogue and nothing really going on. I think I showed you all of the best bits. Uh, except for the swimming scene, but you can't really see anything, so uh, why bother? But, uh, I, I do admit, um, the two lovebirds are uh, kind of cute together, and, and some of the uh, chimp antics are okay. Uh, but it, this one's a hard one to get past the whole aspect that aliens are look like Asians. And... Terrestrials look like Caucasians. And the back and forth about whether the Centaurans are trustworthy or not and all that is just really puts a dark shadow on the film. It cuts away from any enjoyment you might get. I also don't like that uh, earlier in the film, uh, Tang mentions uh, Neanderthals, but we only get a brief look at them towards the end. And a bit of an amusing uh, thing about this film, there is only one woman in it, Linda, who's on the prehistoric planet. Yet a lot of the ads and uh, artwork for the, show, for the film in the publicity department showed many women in uh, prehistoric costumes that are not in the film. They were just made to promote the film to give you an idea that you'd be seeing all these scantily clad women when you don't, and was typical of uh, that kind of ballyhoo. Uh, let me see, which company made this? Although the scenes that they filmed for the promotions were actually added for the foreign release. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm not really seeing. Uh... Eh, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of a uh, kind of like uh, how uh, Stephen King described the um, horror of Party Beach. It's just kind of a wet fart of a film. It's uh... the 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 older actors do okay, but. Uh... It's not really much to work with. Wendell Corey's not too bad. His alcoholism hasn't gotten uh, destroyed his, his talent as much as it did in Astral Zombies a few years later. And John Agar, despite whatever personal problems he might have, he was a solid actor. Not a great actor, but uh, a good actor. And the rest, ugh. I mean, well, Robert Edo and then the actress playing his uh, love interest are okay, but don't really have much to uh, work with. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of a meh film. Next week, I will hopefully have a better uh, topic to review. Uh, until then, and please hit like, share, and subscribe. And uh, stay after my credits for my favorite scene, which, uh, if you're a Misty, you'll already know what it is.
volunteering for something. I remember one time back at headquarters, I volunteered for a karate course. They taught me all the chops, the head, the neck, the show, stomach, the whole thing there. The karate kicks, and the over-the-head throw. Hi, Kiva! Hot! 